Hello, Orchid friends. I got tagged by Rachel with another Orchid tag. Thank you, Rachel, for tagging me. And I think it might have been Maria Young who came up with these questions. So thank you, Maria. You can now go back to your orchids or cook dinner or something like that while listening to my video because the footage won't be too exciting, I just grab what's in bloom. Let's get started with the questions. Number one and two are What's your funniest, most devastating or most embarrassing orchid experience? I thought about this question for a moment and then I asked my partner because he obviously remembers things that were embarrassing for me way better than me. And there is a story that I had shut out indeed. I'm not very good at storytelling, so you have to trust me that it was pretty embarrassing. Many years ago we were on vacation in Ireland. I was into orchids back then, but not so much into English. And I didn't know the word orchid or orchid nursery. We were staying in a B&B and I asked the owner where I could buy some, I think I said, orchids. <laughs> she looked at me and asked what I meant by orchids. I tried to explain it and it took quite some time until she finally got it. <laughs> I think it took minutes. And then she asked, oh, you mean orchids? And I think I still kind of insisted on orchids. I just couldn't imagine that it's pronounced that way and not orchids like children or chicken. I think I turned as red as a beetroot when I finally got it. Actually, I find the word still quite difficult. Most devastating orchid experience? I think that was struggling with what I think was fusarium on my vandas a few years ago. Number three. What are your orchid pet peeves? I don't know if that is a pet peeve, but I really dislike watering. It's time consuming, it's wet, it's just not my thing. And if that is not a pet peeve, maybe this is one. Sometimes I show a picture of a beautiful orchid to my partner that I definitely do not have and that in my opinion looks completely different from my other orchids. And he says, but you have that one already, haven't you? No, where is it? I don't have it. At first I couldn't think of any pet peeve, but I ended up with quite a lot of them on my list. I don't like misspelled orchid names, and I could cry when I want to film some flowers, but then I don't have the time for it, and then it's dark outside or too gloomy. And then the flowers fade. <laughs> no. And I can't get over the fact that there are still orchids that are taken from the wild for us to place them on our windowsills. It's unnecessary and I have the feeling that most people actually don't want to support it. But when they buy orchids they just forget about it for a moment and don't make sure that it's not taken from the wild. I think we must take care more about it. Number 4. What was your favorite orchid gift? That's definitely my favorite Bresolalio Cathlia. Actually, I don't know if it was finally gifted to me, but I take care for it, so I guess it's kind of mine. Number five. What was your most enlightening orchid discovery? Just recently I noticed that my smaller Thelonopsis orchids that are mostly sitting in 7cm pots in bark do not appreciate lazy watering at all and that it might have been the reason why they didn't grow neither roots nor leaves over a long period of time, like years. Watering them more frequently induced root growth quite impressively, and that was something new for me. Pretty late enlightening orchid discovery <laughs> after lazy watering for years. Number six, what are your best orchid practices? My best, or at least my favorite orchid practice, is still my lazy watering routine. Although it doesn't work very well for the smallest ones in their 7cm pots. But for the plants that sit in pots that are about 9 to 15cm wide, or for vandas, that's the right thing for me. And these plants tend to have a very good root system that can store a lot of water. On my windowsill everything is directed towards lazy watering and I'm really good at it. What a surprise, it's really not too difficult not to water. 
So I'd say time consuming practices, no thank you. Time and space saving practices, yes please. Number seven, what are your favorite places to buy orchids? I love swapping orchids, but that's not the answer to the question, I think. Mm, I like buying them in the Orchid Society or on forums or on eBay, where I can see the actual plant that I'm buying in advance. Number eight, what is your least favorite place to buy orchids? That's our expensive garden center and online shops where I can't see the actual plant that I'm buying in advance. Number nine, what's the worst orchid advice you've ever been given? Okay, I know that this works for many people and everybody should really do what pleases him or her. But the worst orchid advice for me was that I must water or at least spray the roots of my vandas every day. If I had followed this advice, I would never have gotten them in the first place. Question number 10 is what's the best orchid advice you can give? I really liked T.D. Moore's advice to base your purchases on your growing environment and that's why I have a more or less boring collection with mostly fowls, flanders and cattleyas because they like to grow here on my windowsill. And I also liked Rachel's answer very much. I've heard that there are as many ways to grow orchids successfully as there are orchid growers and I think that is true. My way is lazy watering and therefore not repotting very often and I use old school media like bark, sagno moss and air. And if you don't feel comfortable with fancy new media like me, maybe you can just lean back, relax and go back to the roots so to say. Well, that was another orchid tag. I hope you enjoyed the video. The questions were kind of tricky. I'd like to tag Andrea and Anna Maria. And also, Maria Young, have you answered these questions already yourself? If no, please do it. I miss your videos and I hope you are doing well. Happy growing to all of you. Bye bye.